And welcome to yet another bite-sized marketing webinar with me, Miles from Miles Marketing. And this week, we're going to be talking all about market research ideas. Now, uh, as part of my preamble before we get started, um, look, I took one for the team today. I went to the dentist this morning uh, to have some fillings done um, and I opted not to have the anesthesia, um, <laughs> which for those of you that have ever done this, um, you feel a lot of pain for a very short period of time. <laughs> but the last thing I wanted to do today was to come on uh, with my <laughs> with my mouth all swollen and dribbling from both sides, because that would not have been good for anybody now, would it? Um, any of you uh, enjoy last week's uh, webinar with Sapna? If you've not seen it, you can check it out on the YouTube channel, um, or I'm sure you can go onto my page and find it on LinkedIn. Yeah, thank you, Justin. Yeah, nice shirt. I've um, had some more merch done. Um, I've got a, I've got a confession to make though. Um, I ordered three XL, and um, even though I am a large chap, uh, I'm not, I'm not that large. So a lot of a lot of my shirts are far too big. But um, hey, there we go, there we go. We'll sort it out. But thank you, Justin, for that kind observation. Uh, Justin Moy of uh, Media Fame. Uh, he does sell mortgages, but um, you know. You can find him uh, in your national newspapers now. <laughs> little little in joke there for you. Right. Look, that's enough preamble. Um, I will just check that we are live on socials, although I suppose that Justin coming on suggests that we are. Uh, yeah. OK, so we are. We are. We are. Um, oh, and we have a few people watching. So thank you. Welcome. Uh, please put any questions you've got in the chat. Um, let us know um, how you feel about uh, market research and, and what you know about it, right? Um, what's worked for you? Let us know. So here we go. Now, uh, I have mentioned this in the past before, but there are sort of two main groups that market, uh, two terminologies that market research fall within. Uh, and they are quantitative, I can hardly say it, quantitative <laughs> uh, and qualitative <laughs> I sound like I'll cry quantitative and qualitative market research right and quantitative is all about things that are data driven it's about surveys questionnaires poll it's basically gathering data where you can analyze the data that's quantitative or as it's abbreviated nicely to quant it's a lot easier to say. Then the qualitative, <laughs> qualitative is all about observation. So it's about behaviors. So observation, subjectiveness, I guess. And this is all done around sort of focus groups and things like Vox Pops. We'll come on to those things uh, in a minute. Uh, thank you, Philip. Yes, I am indeed live. Um, have I had my teeth put back in? Yes, I have, Justin. Thank you very much indeed. Um, although maybe one day I'll have uh, all of me teeth done so that they're nice and sort of white and, you know, glitzy. Never, never, never. Right. OK, so um, quant quantitative and qualitative. I'm going to I'm just going to call it qual and quant. They're the two main sort of brackets that market research fall in. But there are plenty of different methods to be applied for those. So things like surveys, customer ob observations, interviews, focus groups, data analytics, case studies, um, experimental research, the list goes on. Um, now, the... When you when you talk to researchers, and I would always recommend that if you have the budget available, go out and engage with a market research company because you are definitely going to get quality data uh, and information back for you to be able to formulate your marketing plans around. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, 
some of the things you need to think about, right? So at the very heart of any market research that you do, you must always keep your target market in mind, okay? So what, what do I mean by this? Well, if you were to go out and do a survey in the high street, let's say that you uh let's say that you are a cake maker right and you want to do some research in terms of which of these three cake mixtures you think is the best right to put on onto your product list and you go out and you ask people to do the sort of the taste test now there's no point in you asking old people for for uh, for want of a better bracket um, what they think about your your uh, your cake, or indeed asking children, if you like, what they think about your cake, if your target market is not that bracket. <laughs> so your target market, it may, it may be uh, early 20 females, whatever it may be. It may be mothers that are 45 plus, right? So maybe that was a bad example, but the point is, keep your target market in mind when you're doing your research so if you do focus groups make sure the focus groups are of your target market all right otherwise all of your data or if you're american your data is going to be skewed um think about the level of detail don't over complicate um you know start start wide and filter down so don't start asking people sort of a, a a plethora of different questions straight off the bat ask them questions that you can sort of if answer is a then ask them b you know sort of ask them wide sweeping statements and then through a, a filtration process if you like start to filter down and drill down a little bit more once they've asked them try and keep the questions that you're asking as simple as possible so that your uh, target if you like can't go off on a tangent there are you know you're getting them to answer the specificness of the questions that you're asking and track the data like in my opinion the larger the data pool the better so if you're gonna go out and do market research try and do it on as large a scale as you can because the more data you get the more accurate the results are going to be and i've said it before use a pro you're much better off there going out and asking for experts now, one of the big tips I'm going to give you is this, and this bucks the trend and goes against the grain. Yes, trust your head, trust the data. But, 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 you know your business really well. And if something aligns with your why and your values, and you feel it in here is the right thing to do, do it regardless of what the data says, okay? And I can give you an example of this. So in my previous life, uh, when I worked within the betting industry, we launched a product called Virtual Racing. This was back in the very early 2000s. So it was computer generated horse racing. And we, <laughs> Uh, we did some market research, right? We had lots of budget available and we pulled in punters and we asked them what they thought of a computer generated horse race. And 100% and the view was it was a bad idea. They called it cartoon racing, Mickey Mouse racing. They did not want computer generated horse racing within the betting shop. It was a resounding no. And we went back to the board and we presented this, <laughs> these findings. And around the table, we all agreed that we would ignore the market research and that we thought it was going to be a good idea. And we thought that it was the answer to a lot of our issues. And we did think that we could address a lot of the scepticisms 
that the customers or the target market had around virtual racing by putting steps in place to avoid those things, right? And that's what we did. If we'd listened to the market research, we would not have launched this product. And over 20 years later, the product is worth in excess of one and a half billion pounds a year to the UK betting industry alone, okay? And it is now a part of the daily diet in every betting shop in the land. So that's just an example of where if it feels right and if it aligns with what you're trying to do, go with it regardless of what the market research has to say, okay? Because, you know, those that, uh, he, he, he who dares, Rodney, he who dares. Right, uh, here we go. So some of the different things that you can do, you can hold interviews. Now they can revolve around focus groups. And if you use a professional, they will do this. They have um, you know, uh, facilities around town centers where they call people in. Yes, they pay them a small amount of money, um, but then they are, start asking them the questions, all right? So think about um, you know, doing that. You can use a moderator. You can actually sit behind the sort of one-way glass and, and watch and observe um, what's going on. So you can sort of spy on them if you like. Um, but it's really important here to get a moderator that's not linked to your business so that they're not biased. And again, in my view, having a professional one is the, the right way to go. So you can use formal focus groups. You can also do something called Vox Pops. Now, this is uh, a terminology which applies to uh, the people that you see on the high street who stop you and ask you if you've got a couple of minutes to ask a few questions, answer a few questionnaires, or they're asking you to do a taste test, that kind of thing. That's what Vox Pops is. So it's uh, generally on the street or in a shopping centre, uh, and you can do things like sampling, which is you know, offering people some free product to see um, what their thoughts are or a sort of a taste test. Or you could even, um, let's say that you've got some creative for a poster. You can sort of ask your target market, do they like A, do they like B, just to get some sort of feedback around um, maybe your creative if you're going to spend a lot of money on a big campaign. You can use box Pops. Uh, and then think about some perhaps one-on-one -on -one market research. Now, this is probably more applicable to uh, most of you as small businesses, but um, you can take a current customer and just sort of say to them, look, we've worked together for a little while now. Would you mind sitting down and me asking you a few questions about, you know, your interaction with me or the products or services or why you use us? So asking those people, the people that know you best, if you like, what their views are is a really good way of doing some market research and getting some accurate feedback. So that was interviews. Uh, surveys. Now, surveys, this is where you get the accurate data from. And again, it may be more applicable to some businesses than others. But these days, with digital platforms, um, it's really easy to create uh, surveys and to pull in a lot of data. So surveys really these days are very easy to do. Um, they're, you know, in terms of where you put them and how people engage, well, through social media or through um, your website or through an email campaign, it's very easy to send uh, a survey out to all of your contact sphere. You can even do this in person, right? It doesn't have to be just digital. So through those interviews uh, in groups or, or Vox Pops on the street. Um, mostly, I would suggest using multiple choice for your questions. Now, why do I say this? I've done many, uh, many, many, many of a questionnaire, right, in my time. And when it's data driven, it's so much easier to produce a report that's cohesive. When it's open question driven, it is a nightmare to try and distill and find one thing in common. So it's all very well to perhaps uh, do multiple choice and maybe on some things give people the option to 
add their own narrative. But what I'm going to tell you here is you're you ask 10 people the same question, you get 10 different answers if they're able to write things down themselves, right? Which makes things really hard to come to a conclusion. So wherever possible, I would advise you to give people multiple choice and not to give them the choice to write their own opinion in when it comes to surveys and, and collating data. If you want to ask people their opinion, then that's what the sort of the focus groups and that sort of thing is for. OK, so don't, in my opinion, if you want to make things easy, don't don't allow don't allow people to give their own opinion when you're doing a survey. So when this is another thing, customer observation. Now, this is really driven around uh, when you're able to spend some budget. But this would be uh, in an environment where perhaps, um, you know, per perhaps you're doing some market research about a new e-commerce website that you're about to launch. You know, you can spend a decent amount of money on an e-commerce website. So doing some market research where it's led by custom observation is really important, right? So you could have someone in a room, you could get your proposed website up and get them to utilize it, get them to order a widget from it. And what you can do is you can record the screen so you can actually see um, how they, the user experience, how they've moved through your website. But also you can be there remotely viewing them, if you like, <laughs> as a voyeur, to see how they go about utilizing it. Because when you design a website and your experience of it can be completely different to your customer's experience. So it's really important to have an open mind and see how um, your customers um, perceive or utilize things. Okay, uh, lastly, data and analyzing data. Um, from surveys, you get a lot of data, but we, we're data rich now because of our digital age. So, you know, through our CRM systems, we're, we've got data that we can analyze. Through our, you know, our email account, so things like MailChimp, you can get um, a lot of data from those. Uh, from our website traffic through, say, Google Analytics, you've got lots of data. So data is king to us these days. Through our social media, you can now get advanced analytics on who's looking at your posts and how long they're looking at them for and which one worked the best and so on and so forth. So please don't ignore the data. Look at the data. The larger the data set, the better. But analyzing the data and then making adjustments and look, there's an old saying that I like, which is the, the, the listen, modify and test. So, you know, be observant of the data, modify it and make some change and then test it out and then listen and modify and test and use that sort of that cycle to keep uh, on top of your uh, marketing and making it as effective as possible. Right. Right, so we come to the end now, um, and I just want to do you a little recap and do uh, my top three tips for market research ideas, okay? So the first one is gonna be make sure that you're talking to your target market when you're doing your research. If you're going out on the high street and if you're asking people, if you're bringing in third parties to do this, make sure they're briefed on who to stop on the high street, right? Make sure they're not wasting your time and money by stopping people that aren't your target market and getting views that are irrelevant to you and your business. Number two, keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate your market research. Make it really easy for people to answer the questions. Use multiple choice, in my opinion, wherever possible. That allows you then to really analyze the data effectively. And the last one, I haven't spoken about this, but this is about repeating your market research regularly to track trends. So um, spend time in the first place making sure that you produce a robust piece of market research and then repeat it periodically every three months, every six months, at least every year 
and looked to track the changes that are occurring there. Because by being up to date with how your business is evolving will mean that you can adjust your marketing accordingly and be effective with it. So there we go. That is my uh, market research ideas webinar. I'm finishing with my top three tips, which were speak to your target, uh, speak with your target market, keep it simple, and repeat your market research on a regular basis, and compare uh, compare the notes. So there we go. Uh, I will be here again uh, next Tuesday at twelve thirty, where um, we're going to be talking about PR. If my uh, uh, my memory serves me rightly. Uh, uh, and I might be citing Mr. Justin Moy, who seems to be have turned into somewhat of a PR guru of late. And I'll share with you the website that he's using to get a lot of traction with the national press. And coming up on the 6th of December, we've got the fantastic Dylan Gandhi, who's going to be talking all about retail SEO and what you can do about that. So there we go. Thank you very much indeed for watching today. We've had quite a few people watching live. Um, if you've got any uh, specific questions, uh, either pop them in the chat or you can see my WhatsApp number there. Please just get in touch and ask away. Uh, you can listen to this now a multiple in a, a multitude of ways, uh, either through the uh, catch up system on LinkedIn through my profile or on my YouTube channel, Miles Marketing. Or, in fact, I now clip these down into little podcasts, which are available on all the popular podcast platforms. So there we go. If, um, if you've got a subject that you'd like me to discuss, why not let me know? Um, I haven't yet started um, looking at January yet, although I have teed up someone very special to do our January um our team up one in January. I'm not going to give away any secrets yet. I'll tease that into December. Um, but if you want me to talk about any particular subjects, please just let me know uh, and I will do my best to do that. There we go. So Phil Lip has been watching from the train today. Justin's given us a big thumbs up. Um, the J PR Justin. <laughs> uh, thank you indeed for all those that are lurking and watching the background. I, I love it. I love a lurker. And I will see you all next Tuesday at 12.30 live on LinkedIn. Ta-ta for now.